Hi everybody. Now today it's a pretty cloudy day here in Milan. But it's the 1st of February and it's time to, to start talking about solar panels. So here is my 20 watts uh, solar panel here on my roof. The 100 watts one is still on its way and I have a very 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 long cable which is running all the way through the house in my workshop. And this is the very long cable which runs inside all the way through my little solar charge controller. Now I've been working on this project since pretty much last summer and of course here's my well, rather small 12 volt battery. So what is a solar charge controller? I mean, why would you want one of those? Well, can't we just connect the solar panel directly to the battery? Well, we could and it would certainly work, but it has some downsides. In fact, by connecting the solar panel directly to the battery, we can risk overcharging it. Because, of course, the solar panel open circuit voltage is somewhere like 18 and 22 volts, depending on lightning conditions. And a fully charged 12 volt battery is more 13.8 or, you know, 14 volt at max. So we need a circuit which goes between the solar panel and the battery that can uh, control the current flowing from the solar panel to the battery and charge the battery until it reaches a certain voltage. And when that voltage is reached, he has to reduce the charge rate in order to maintain the voltage fully charged, the battery fully charged. And this is of course possible using PWM. So what we need is a circuit that can create a PWM signal which changes its high to low ratio in order to control the amount of current flowing from the solar panel to the battery. Now, something I want in my solar charge controller is not having a microcontroller because, well, we have to actually adjust the PWM pulse width to maintain the battery at a certain voltage. I mean, is this really, is a microcontroller really necessary? Can't we just do that using a lot of components? And of course, if I say it, well, we can, and let me show you. Now, of course, in order to create a PWM signal using, uh, well, in my case, using an op amp, we have to generate a triangle wave so that we can feed the triangle wave on one input of the op amp. And then on the other input of the op amp, we can just feed a DC signal. And what the op amp will does, it will, it will just compare basically the DC voltage with the triangle wave. And so, as the DC voltage changes its level, well, of course, the pulse width increases or decreases and the frequency stays the same. So that's why we have to get a triangle wave to produce a PWM square wave with an op amp. Now, just a quick look on Google and I searched for triangle wave op amp generator and here's what we got. Now, this circuit uses just two op amps in order to provide a triangle wave you see here on the second output, but also we have a square wave and that is very, very important for another thing which I'll have to talk about. Now, let's say we want to control the brightness of a lamp, now it's this thing right here, <laughs> really. <laughs> uh, we, want con we want to control the brightness of that lamp so, uh, if we want to control through a PWM signal, well, we feed it into the gate of a MOSFET. Now, that certainly work for a lamp, but this way, the situation for a 12 volt battery and a solar panel is like, slightly different. So here is the same circuit, but instead of a 12 volt battery and a lamp, we're actually using a solar panel and a battery. And we have our M-channel announcement mode MOSFET on the low side. Now, this should in theory work, but in this circuit, there's a very important component which is missing. 
and it is this parasitic diode, which is inside, well, effectively, it's a body diode. It's naturally inside every N-channel MOSFET. And this, we can see that it doesn't work because current can flow from the solar panel to the battery and then to the battery through the N-channel MOSFET, which is always on because that body diode conducts all the time back down through the solar panel. So this is a configuration which doesn't work because of this body diode. So to shorten the story by quite a bit, in order to be able with a solar panel to charge a battery, we need to put an N-channel MOSFET in this arrangement so that the body diode doesn't actually conduct and the solar panel charges the battery only when this N-channel MOSFET is on. Well, it's possible to turn this MOSFET on, but really we need to turn it on with a voltage which is actually higher than the voltage of the battery. And in order to do that, we have to include in our solar charge controller a circuit that can generate a voltage of, you know, about 22 volts from the 12 volt or roughly, you know, 13.5, 13.7 volts of our 12 volt battery we want to charge. Now, of course, for all this thing, credit goes to this guy here, Julian Eilert, uh, because he explains very, very well in a video uh, the MOSFET's arrangement to charge a battery from a solar panel. So I put a link on his video in the, de in the de description. So go check it out because, you know, it's very, very well made uh, video and um, it, it explains everything you need to know about these things. So here is the circuit I was talking about on a breadboard. Now actually it's a different version of the circuit, but we'll come to that uh, in a future video. And I have the oscilloscope probe here, so we can probe what actually this LM324 quad op amp is producing. Now here I have the same circuit that I described before. Now here is the first output and we can see, oh, if I can get the oscilloscope probe. We can see on the oscilloscope that it's a very, very, well, not very nice really, but it's a square wave. And on the other output, which in the case of the LM324 is on the other side of the circuit, we have our very, very nice triangle wave. So that's a start point. So I searched on Google for voltage doubler circuit. And we have a circuit which involves just really one capacitor, you know, this is a smoothing capacitors, and just two diodes. And we have actually a 555 which is configured as a uh, a stable, um, basically an unstable multi vibrator. And here on pin 3, we have a square wave which is exactly the same as the one we get in our circuit. Now we can feed it into to one capacitor actually and configure the two diodes you know uh, here it says 22 microfarad and 14004 but actually we could use just uh, lower power parts and you know with just the square wave here we have a voltage which is actually nearly the double of the supply voltage which is very 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 nice so that's exactly what I've done here because the output of the square wave goes through this little wire to the board and through some transistors we actually switch the square wave into this capacitor and through these two diodes we charge this capacitor which is which become charged which is a voltage which is higher than the battery. And of course we can confirm that using our multimeter. Now of course now, actually, the circuit is in PWN mode. So, actually, the battery reaches volt voltage. You see that it's kind of maintained. Well, it's actually very well maintained. And, you know, the voltage of the battery is 13.73 volts. Well, if I just probe this point here of the circuit, we actually have a voltage. Well, it's actually out of scale. So, let me switch to 200 volts. Now switch to 200 volts and voltage is 23.8 volts. 
that's very, very good. So as I said before, to get a PWM signal from a triangle wave, we need to fit that into another op amp. Now, I think that's the one on this side, if the camera can focus, nice. Uh, it's the one on this side. And you can see that it go, it, the triangle wave gets exactly from this point here. But here, what do we do have? Well, we have a DC voltage. So the op amp, by comparing the triangle wave to a DC voltage, can create a PWM signal which is proportional to that voltage. And again, oscilloscope, oscilloscope to the rescue. I'm just gonna probe this app here. And look what we got, a nice pulse width. Now, of course, the controller is actually working, so the PWM rate is actually going in, in and out. It's adjusting that to maintain the battery voltage. So the way it does this, you know, may seem extremely complicated, but it actually is very simple. And, well, look at the circuit. Really, we have two components, really. <laughs> That's how easy it is. Now, this op amp actually compares a reference voltage, which depends upon the voltage of the battery and is set with this potentiometer, with a voltage which is actually regulated by this little Zener diode and a voltage divider. So by comparing those two, we get this. Well, if the reference voltage is actually above the voltage of the battery, well, this op amp, what, what it will do? I mean, it will just say, oh, the output is lower. So it will push this pin high. Now, through this resistor and this capacitor, which is actually a one microfarad capacitor, I mean, I really finished all my ceramic one, but this could be a ceramic. So the voltage which is compared by the fourth op amp, which is actually the PWM generator one, will be high. So the PWM will be all the way up, 100% PWM. If the reference voltage is below the voltage of the battery, and so I, maybe, you know, we connected a fully charged battery, I mean an overcharged battery, well, this op amp will say, well, the voltage of the battery is above the reference voltage. So it will put its pin low. So this capacitor, it's gonna be zero volts. And this capacitor is gonna be comparated through the triangle wave and answerwise the PWM is gonna be zero volts. But what will actually happen when the voltage of the battery is roughly the same as the one of the reference? But this will open will continuously switch uh, between high and low, high and low, and this capacitor will, will reach a voltage uh, that generates a PWM rate, which, which can maintain the reference voltage and the voltage of the battery at the same level. So if the PWM rate is too low, well, this op amp will think, oh, the, again, the voltage of the reference is below the voltage of the battery. Uh, sorry, it's upon the voltage, is higher than the voltage of the battery. Well, this op amp will turn high. So through this resistor, the voltage here will increase, and so the pulse width will increase as well, until the voltage of the battery is the same as the voltage of the reference. So this is actually very, very simple. And a very nice thing about using just a single quad op amp is that the current draw uh, of the regulator is actually extremely low because since we're using relatively high value resistors, and basically we the only component which draws power is the op amp, we have a current wall which is not much, and it's just a little bit more than just the quiescent current of the op amp. And the LM304 is actually a low power op amp, and its quiescent current is below one milliamp. So in my next video, I'll talk to you about the iSight driver. Of course, uh, for the iSight driver, uh, we have a lot of credits going to Julian because he figured out the first time how to do that. But I think I have improved this circuit because 
my design uses all NPN transistors. And this can be a very, very nice thing if I actually would go start thinking at the very least about producing it as Julian did. So, I mean, it's very, very nice. And I'll talk to you about the iSight driver, just the iSight driver in my future video. So stay tuned for that. But for now, I am extremely happy about how the solar charge controller works. And, you know, let's look the voltage of the battery. Oh, let's just switch to 20 volts. 13.75 volts. That's almost spot on. And look the pulse width. I mean, that's so nice. I mean, let's try just connecting the load. It is actually just a 12 volts light, which is using here. I just connect it right now. And here's what happens. Well, the circuit detects that there's a load and adjusts the pulse width to come with this load. Let's remove the load and, you know, the battery, the voltage of the battery will have to recover because but yeah, I have a very, very small solar panel and there's virtually no sun today. But when the voltage of the battery will recover, the pulse width should start modulating again. So let's wait for that. So we'll almost get in there. 13.73 volts. Oh, come on. Oh. Almost get something. Oh, it's getting there and as you can see we have our pulse width and the battery voltage is maintained very 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 nice